Stand me up at the gates of hell, but I won't back down. Gonna stand my ground, I won't be turned around. The patrol set out for what was supposed to be a friendly meeting with village elders. Rocky terrain forced them to get out of their armored vehicles and move in on foot. They're walking up toward the village. Uh, what happens next? Right at daylight, they open fire on them. Uh, the, the enemy starts, starts raining down. Um, they had mortars, rockets, um, rocket propelled grenades, and uh, small arms fire. They were waiting for you. They were. This was an ambush. Oh, it was. We were set up. Did you think you were going to die? I didn't think I was going to die. I knew I was. You knew you were going to die. I knew I was going to die. The battle took place in this remote valley deep in enemy territory in the mountains of eastern Afghanistan. Meyer ran a gauntlet of fire not once but five times, with insurgents shooting down on him from three sides. So why are you going in there? There was U.S. troops getting shot at, and those are your brothers. Four Marines were trapped in the village of Ganjgal after a patrol of nine Americans, both Marines and Army soldiers, and 45 Afghan military was ambushed. So I looked at Staff Sergeant Rodriguez Chavez and I said, we're going in. Staff Sergeant Juan Rodriguez Chavez, who would receive the Navy Cross, the nation's second highest honor, drove an armored truck toward the village while Meyer manned the gun turret. It felt like the whole valley turned on this truck. You were it. It was like, we're it, like here comes the big target. You know, the enemy was just, they were just running right at you, you know, at the truck. So this is not just raining fire down, now they're trying to swarm the truck? It's just like a, 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 a killing fest for them, I think. How close were rounds coming to you when you were doing this? The rounds were hitting the turret, and I just kept moving back left and right, left and right. There was so much fire, it sounded like static over top of your head. I was just waiting for one of those rounds to hit me in the face. A helicopter finally spotted the four Marines, but there was too much gunfire to land. Well, they started to try to land and they couldn't. You know, they, they were going to get shot down. So I just took off running. And uh, it was probably the longest run of my life. Um, I felt like I couldn't move fast enough because it's wide open. Rounds are hitting everywhere around me. I jumped into this uh, trench. And when I did, I landed on Gunnery Sergeant Johnson. Oh. And he was? He, he was dead. They were all dead. First Lieutenant Michael Johnson, Sergeant Edwin Johnson, Sergeant Aaron Kennefick, and Corpsman James Doc Layton. It was now six hours into the battle that would also take the lives of eight Afghan soldiers. So you've just spent the last six hours risking, which is not the right word, your life throwing away your life to try to get to those guys. Yeah. And they're dead. You know, you, you feel nothing but being a failure, you know? That you couldn't get to them in time. Yeah. You realize that what you did was extraordinary? No, I don't. It would have been extraordinary if I'd have brought them out alive. That would have been extraordinary. There ain't no easy way out Hey, I will stand my ground And I won't back down Where did you, uh, where were you first wounded in, in this compound? Um, you had gotten inside, is that correct? We, right where it says inner courtyard? Yeah. We were coming out of there to, uh, I don't know if this, yeah, there it goes, I can point on it. We were coming out and... We were crossing over here to clear out behind the chicken coop in the chicken coop when two guys with enemy with AK-47s were shooting from their hip, just spraying down that alley and hit me in the legs, hit the guy behind me just below his uh, rib cage on the left side, PFC Robinson. And uh, we, I, I kept running to, uh, the, behind the chicken coop to take cover from uh, just 
mass volume of fire that we were taking. I thought I had only been shot in my left leg and the bullet was stuck in there. It, it sounds kind of ridiculous, but it was like Forrest Gump. Something bit me and just start running, get, get, get behind cover. And, uh, so you, with, the, with the shell uh, in you, you continued to run? Well, later on I found out when, once I got to the casualty collection point where we take care of our wounded guys, is uh, when they started cutting off my pants, that's when I realized it had gone through both my right. thighs. Right. Continued to function, not just one leg, both legs had been uh, yes. injured. Yeah. Uh, and then there were grenades tossed back and forth. I had, I had lobbed a grenade over the chicken coop toward the enemy. As that went off, Sergeant Higgins, another one of our rangers, ran over to us. I immediately, uh, because they were junior rangers from myself, and I said, hey, start helping Robinson, start pulling security on that corner because we're still taking mm -hmm. heavy fire. Enemy grenade came over, the close vicinity, knocked those two down, and they got up kind of in shock. Hey, what was that? What's going on? I said, hey, they're throwing grenades. Keep your heads down. Keep pulling security. Uh, I, I'm still at this point keeping on my radio, informing command what's going on, and we need to. I just want to remind people right then and there you have uh, two legs that have been shot, uh, and uh, you're taking grenades being thrown at you. You're on the radio trying to calm the, your buddies down, and they're still throwing grenades at you. All of this is going on. And there's still uh, heavy volumes of uh, 762 right. fire coming in. Uh, the next thing I know is uh, I'm, I'm turning to watch my corner around that chicken coop. As I turned to check on my guys, we weren't no further than uh, about six feet, four to six feet in, in to the end of us. And I, I see a, uh, I knew it wasn't ours. It, was, it looked like a pineapple grenade sitting on the ground in the middle of us. Immediately knew what I had to do, grabbed it to get it away from me and my guys as I was throwing it. My hand opened up and the, completely amputated the, the hand right at the wrist. And so it went off in your hand as you were throwing it away. Yes. Is that what happened? Uh, what does that do to a person in that situation? Did you go into shock immediately? Were you, were you stunned? What? I think every person reacts to it different. Um, I sat up, and I can show you this. This hand actually comes off, but uh, oh. it was. It looked exactly like that. It was flat, like somebody had taken a circular saw. And I can remember very vividly. I sat up and I looked at it. I saw the radius and the ulna poking up about a quarter of an inch or so, and uh, and and. I thought for a split second, why is this thing, this thing spraying three feet in the air, gushing blood? And then I realized, okay, what do you need to do? Take control of it. And uh, I have a tourniquet, put a tourniquet on it, and um, just kept getting back on the radio, giving updates to my command, because I knew as long as I was still coherent and I could still do something, I was, I was going to be productive and for sure to keep my guys who were... Uh, Still, I mean, I, I can only imagine what they were thinking, seeing me get my hand blown off right next to them. Uh, uh, was the objective successful? Did, was the mission successful? It was. It was yeah. very successful. Uh, Although picking up and throwing the live grenade, previously wounded staff on Peachman, his gallant act undeniably saved his fellow Well, I know what's right. I got just one life. In a world that keeps on pushing me around But I'll stand my ground And I won't back down Hey, baby There ain't no easy way out Hey, I will stand my ground And I won't Back down No, I won't 